Good morning. I apologize. I forgot to hit the record button on our class today. So I'm just going to zip through the notes. At least you'll have the basic notes that are important. <clears throat> you need to go to the MSJC website and there's a quiz there that you need to take. So please go there and take that quiz. It's due by Friday. It's only five questions. So far, people have completed it in an average of about six minutes. So that's going to help me know um, how to give you a test in the future. And it's going to give you a little practice on taking a test on that website. <clears throat> and thank you to all who have joined the discussion. Also on the website, make sure you do that. That is part of what you need to do, too, is um, post a reply to the question I ask and then reply to at least two of your classmates. All right. <clears throat> This chapter 12 is on personality. We're going to look at some different theories on personality. Personality is relatively stable um, and enduring patterns of thoughts, feelings, and actions. The first theories we're going to look at are the psychoanalytic theories founded by Freud. These are very in-depth theories and have been accepted over time and have been referred to in anthropology and religion and art and literature. So it's part of a good education to be familiar with the terms. A lot of the um, theories are not as accepted today, but there are some that are still accepted. Freud was the founder, and those that came after him and added or changed some of the thinking about those theories are Adler, Jung, and Horney. Freud had three levels of consciousness. He called the mind the psyche. So he said we had the conscious part, which are those thoughts or motives um, that a person is aware of or remembering, the preconscious, which are the thoughts, motives, or memories that can easily be brought to mind, and then the unconscious, which are those things that lie be below our normal awareness. And so we use the iceberg as a representation of the psyche or the mind. Freud also talked about three personality structures. So on a test, there's a difference between the three levels of the mind and the three personality structures. So we talk about the three personality structures. The first is the id, which is all of the um, instinctual biological urges that a person has. It's immature, impulsive, irrational, and it's totally unconscious, and it serves as the reservoir of mental energy. So when, it, when that energy builds up, the id seeks to gratify that immediately, once immediate gratification. And so we say the id operates under the pleasure principle. The ego is the rational part of the psyche that develops as a child grows, is responsible for planning, problem solving, reasoning, and controlling the potentially destructive energy of the id. The ego's chant. Um, Channel, the ego's task is to channel and release that id's energy in ways that are compatible in the real world. So the ego operates on the reality principle. The last part of the personality structure to develop is the super ego. That develops from internalized parental and societal standards, and it strives for perfection, and therefore it's unrealistic as the id. And so since it has this conscious element, people say it is the it operates under the morality principle. So as an example, you are walking by a classmate and you see a candy on the desk. The id would be saying, candy, I want to go grab that candy now. The superego would be saying, stealing is wrong. You can't be taking people's stuff. We'll have to do without. The ego moderates between them and says, okay, yeah, we want that candy, but maybe we can just go ask the person, would you be willing to share some of your candy or would you be able to trade for something? 
Now, when we have these conflicts where the, the ego can't satisfy both the id and the, and the superego, then anxiety begins to slip into the consciousness. And anxiety is uncomfortable, and people don't want to experience that. They want to avoid it. And so we avoid anxiety through defense mechanisms. And so this is something that is widely accepted in psychology today. Defense mechanisms are the ego's protective method of reducing anxiety by distorting reality. And so Freud believed that we have these unconscious urges like sexual motives or aggressive urges, and these aren't acceptable with society. And so that creates a conflict. And so we have to, to resolve that anxiety somehow. The first defense mechanism is repression. And if I ask you for the different defense mechanisms, then repression is not one that I'm going to accept because that's the one that's debatable. Repression says when something happens, like we might be sexually molested, then we push that out of our consciousness so we don't remember it. And so that's very debated because usually when people have an experience like that, that's something very memorable and something that replays in their mind often. And when we put people under hypnosis, then we're putting them into a very suggestible state. So if somebody's in hypnosis and the, and the hypnotist says, well, do you remember being touched by that person? They're very suggestible at that point, and that puts that into their mind. And so they might then say, yes, now I remember that. So repression is debated and not accepted. The next defense mechanism is sublimation. So we have these, these things causing us anxiety. And so we take that energy and put it into something constructive, like we work really hard, or we, we focus on our schoolwork, or you do some kind of art, or you, you work hard in sports, or have some kind of hobby. So you're taking that, that energy and putting it into something constructive. The next is denial, which I'm sure you've heard of. And we're protecting ourselves from an unpleasant reality by refusing to perceive it. So, for example, alcoholics refuse to admit that they have a problem. They say, I, well, I could stop drinking anytime. And they deny that they have this problem. Denial is not lying about something. If you're cheating on a test and a teacher comes and says, oh, I saw you cheating, and you say, no, I didn't, that's not a defense mechanism of denial. That's just lying. Okay, denial is that you do not perceive the reality of the situation. So if somebody came and said, hey, your loved one was just in an auto accident and they're dead, you, your mind just can't perceive that they could actually be dead and you deny that they're dead. So you say, you know, oh, you've got the wrong person or that that can't be, they made a mistake identifying the person. They're, they're alive, I know it. That's denial. You don't perceive the reality. It's not the same as just lying about not doing something. Rationalization is when you substitute reasons that are socially acceptable for unacceptable behavior. So you might cheat on a test and then say, well, it's okay, everybody does it. Or um, you might be speeding and the policeman pulls you over and you say, but everybody was speeding. Or maybe somebody hit their girlfriend and somebody told them, hey, you're being abusive. And they said, well, at least I didn't break her arm. Okay, you're trying to justify the behavior, give something socially acceptable for something that really is wrong. Intellectualization is when there's some very emotional or painful aspects to something. And instead of expressing, expressing that pain or that sorrow, you deal with just the, the concrete things that, are, that have nothing to do with emotion. So if somebody dies, instead of um, telling how sad and depressed you are, how much you miss them, you just say, okay, I've got to 
arrange the funeral and I've got to set a date and I've got to pick out a casket and you avoid the emotional aspect. If you're getting divorced, you don't think about how depressed or angry you are. You are just focusing on, okay, I got to sign these papers. Now I got to sell the house and I've got to do this. So intellectualization is basically ignoring the emotional aspects and focusing on the other details that need to be taken care of. Projection is when you have some unacceptable traits, but instead of accepting that you have those traits, then you accuse somebody else of having those traits. So um, you may be super jealous that whenever your um, mate talks to somebody, you get very jealous. But then, um, you talk to somebody and, and your mate comes over and just says, hey, who's that you're talking to? All of a sudden you accuse them of being jealous and go into this whole big thing about how jealous they are. So you are taking the traits that you have and projecting that onto somebody else and accusing them of having those traits. Next is reaction formation. When you have these unacceptable urges and in your behavior, you do something that is in the completely opposite state. So maybe um, you are engaged in pornography and feel really bad about that. So now you're going out in the neighborhood and getting petitions signed to close down the adult bookstore that's there. The next one is regression. Regression is when something happens, we revert to a behavior of when we were younger. So your parent tells you you can't go out and you start crying, go in your room and slam the door and throw a tantrum. Or, um, you know, something happens and you start sucking your thumb or biting your fingernails. We're dealing with a situation in a, in a way that is from an earlier level of development. And lastly is displacement. We have these um, unacceptable impulses that we're angry at somebody and we want to hurt them or yell at them or something, but they're in a position of power. And so we can't do that. So we take that out on somebody else. So you're in school and your teacher tells you your work today was really bad and unacceptable and you're really angry, but you can't yell at the teacher because you don't want to get in trouble. So you go home and, and kick the dog or yell at your little brother or something like that. That's displacement. You're taking those impulses out on somebody less threatening. So now don't confuse that with sublimation. Sublimation is is taking all this energy and doing something constructive with it, like um, art or sports, okay? If you say, um, I was mad at my boss when I went and played soccer and really kicked the ball hard because I pretended it was my boss, that's displacement. You're taking that out on a less threatening object, which is not the same as channeling that energy into something constructive. Freud developed some psychosexual stages. Within these stages, there are things that will add to your broad education and whatever you do, because there's references to these stages in all kinds of different fields. Like you may have heard um, somebody be called, oh, they're real anal about the way they deal with that. That comes from these psychosexual stages. So even though these are less and less accepted in today's uh, modern psychology, and, the, and they're very sexist, as you'll see. Um, there's still a lot that you should know because they're referenced in so many different things. And there are parts that may still be um, referenced and acceptable today in psychology. At each of these stages, Freud said there is some um, zone that, that the person gets pleasure from. So like a baby sticks everything in its mouth. So um, its mouth is the, is the zone of pleasure. And he said there's tasks that need to be developed and um, a person has to get through these tasks or they get fixated at this stage. And if they get fixated, then that affects their personality. And so there are certain things that they could be overindulged or underindulged and that affects their, their personality. 
So these stages, I won't make you know the, the ages associated with them, but we need to be familiar with it. And I'll go through those stages in the next class. So that's a, a quick overview of what we went through today. I also put out on Teams a link to uh, personality assessment. So you might look at that because that's interesting to look at um, the jobs associated with the kind of personality characteristics you have. And also make sure you join the discussion on Canvas and that you take that quiz that's on Canvas by Friday. All right, again, sorry I didn't record the, the full meeting, but you got the important things here. Have a great day.